to turn back and keep your eyes on him. Tian goes for the 1v1. Hero's entrance in to try and protect the jungler as well. Do be on the back line. In comes Flandre, but the stopwatch has come on through. Flandre with a huge Nara ultimate. Maybe this is it. But FBX still firing out. Fight there! Goes fight for turning no! it around. No! What? Way! What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Flowers, and I want to welcome you back to the Outplay by Play. Last episode, we took a look at Faker and T1's five-head bait that solidified the return of the unkillable Demon King to the international stage. This time around, we're heading back to the LPL, where EDG and Viper are making a case for the best team coming out of China, with worlds just around the corner. Let's take a deep dive into the action to see how Viper flipped the switch against heavy favorites FPX to capture his first ever title win. Now, before we get into the final moments, let's take a look at the compositions. What's important to understand here is the difference in the advantages on both sides. FPX opt for an early game comp with lots of poke and CC, as well as triple global and semi-global ultimates. The key here is Zig's lane agency and ability to safely clear minion waves alone, allowing Leona to constantly roam to unlock Doinby and find as many picks as possible. On the flip side, EDG draft a hyper carry comp with incredible scaling properties and an emphasis on Ophelio to backpack the game. And Silas? Well, he was the answer to FPX's long range poke to close the distance for some in your face brawls. With that in mind, it's easy to understand how crucial it is for both teams to play to their strengths, as EDG looked to play a safe early game and drag things out for an Ophelio's hyper carry in the later stages whereas FPX looked to get as much of a lead as possible to snowball and end before the EDG carries can come online. And snowball they did. FPX dominated the early game, sticking to their game plan to a T. With FPX's constant roaming, the former world champs were farming kills across the map, leaving EDG with little to no room to breathe. As the fiery pressure continued to scorch the top side, it was EDG who looked to respond with a dive of their own towards the bot lane. But against a Ziggs who just rips through the minion wave, it didn't go exactly as planned. Gonna open up the map, but EDG looking for the dive again, but it's a Ziggs, boys! You can't dive the Ziggs to Satchel Charge and flip oh, on no. the hook! Oh, Mango no. goes down! And in the case of EDG, when it rains, it pours. FPX took a commanding lead and continued to rain down on kills and objectives for what seemed to be a completely lopsided game. 20 minutes in, they had secured 7 turrets and an inhibitor to just the one turret from EDG for a near 10,000 gold lead. However, what happens next is where things really start to take a turn for the worst. As they approach the Nexus turrets, it's Tion who gets a little too aggressive and goes for the highlight reel kill onto Flandre but finds himself on a gray screen instead. With Baron in play, both teams reset and begin making their way over for what could be the deciding factor of the game. It's at this point that with their advantage in positioning, FPX start chunking down the Baron. But off a Hail Mary play from Mako and JJ, they make the dream work. Watch as Mako does his best Spider-Man impression, hooking himself in first, then JJ with the Lantern. JJ immediately pops Ragnarok to stay alive, then pulls off the cleanest of smite steals before they both fall as sacrificial lands to keep their team in the game. FPX would go on to secure Soul Point, but EDG had found their window of opportunity to claw back into the game. With the mid inhibitor respawning, FPX again begin to put on the pressure. But again, it's Mako who makes things happen with the heat seeking hook onto Tia as Viper blasts away before dunking on him for his third kill of the game. Now this, this is where sh really starts to get interesting. With Baron respawning, both teams do a dance back and forth to see who bites first. As FPX start chunking down the Baron, it's Doin B who finds the engage and turn onto both Mako and JJ. Mako immediately gets deleted and EDG are left running for the hills. As they approach the bot side river, Tian lands Sonic Wave onto JJ for the re-engage. But pay attention to Viper in this sequence. With Onslaught in hand, Viper started with one Severum Q and continued stacking Chakrams after landing his Moonlight Vigil. Now take a look at Flandre, who had been building up his Meganar, 
perfectly time a flash to plaster both Crisp and LWX into the wall, effectively killing the FPX carry who had just come out of stasis. From there, it really is just the Viper show, as he goes full Chad mode and gives us a taste of what's to come at Worlds. Watch as he first sidesteps the GP barrels from Nagari, who he actually couldn't even see at all. As Nagari moves forward, Viper comes right back at him and begins shredding through with some autos, before using Gale Force to eviscerate his fellow countrymen. Then, with Crisp and Teon swarming him, he pops Cleanse to negate all CC from Leona's Q and flashes behind Teon to dodge the abilities before capping it off for the triple kill with Crescendum and Severum for max sustain and DPS. Just like that, in the blink of an eye, Viper had single-handedly won his team the fight and ultimately saved them this game. With just Doin B alive for FPX, EDG would go on to deny the Infernal Soul before making their way over to Baron, where Viper once again, well, did some Viper things. Because FPX will be so decisive and find an engage. Yeah, especially if you've got the get that kind of barrage. Oh no Gary! No Gary! Viper! No way! And so the tides had now fully turned, and EDG's late game carries had scaled to a point where FPX were in a world of trouble. As both teams reset for the next Infernal Drake, it's EDG with the advantage to secure the dragon, with Nagari having to walk a country mile back after just respawning. With an advantage in numbers, Flandre finds the two-man Meganar into the wall, and JJ wins the 50-50 smite fight to put EDG on soul point as well. But what happens next is a key factor to the outcome of the game. After EDG secure the Drake, both Flandre and Mako meet their deaths. Scout, Viper, and JJ are all able to evade the follow-up onslaught and escape. But only Viper and JJ complete their recalls for a base defense, while Scout is forced to stop his own after dodging the sonic wave. As FPX approach the base, Doin B sees an opening and dashes forward for the taunt onto Viper under tower, who instantly pops cleanse and safely falls back, forcing Doin B to use Zonia's. JJ, on the other hand, isn't as fortunate and gets popped by LWX and Nagari. Viper is able to trade the kill, but with the remaining two members of FPX on low HP against a fed of Elios, they're forced to retreat. Meanwhile, Tion and Chris, who were trying to 2v1 a late game Silas rather than just delaying the back and falling off, get mopped the f up and absolutely destroyed. With that fight, EDG would go on to secure the Baron and rip through the tier 2 and mid inhibitor turrets, but not without cost. FPX eventually do find a kill onto Viper, but he respawns just in time for EDG to go on and secure the Infernal Soul with ease. 43 minutes into the game, with Baron in play, EDG have full control around the objective, and FPX have the odds stacked against them. It's at this point that after already losing the Infernal Soul, they're met with a do or die scenario. They have to steal this Baron in order to extend the game and make the impossible possible. As Teon walks up behind the pit wall, he drops a ward to reveal what's going on. But with the Baron health bar quickly getting shredded down, he uses Sonic Wave and then Resonating Strike to go in for the steal. Unfortunately for him, JJ bests him in the smite fight yet again, and Teon gets deleted. At the same time, Doin B ults in, but immediately regrets this decision, as he pops Zonia's into four members of EDG, who make quick work of him as well. From there, it's all but over for FPX, as they're left scrambling with an inevitable fate. Viper, who had been carrying the entire game, flashes forward to eviscerate LWX. Nagari and Crisp? Well, they're just the scraps, and EDG clean them up for the ace and the end to a chaotic comeback victory. With that win, EDG secured the organization's sixth LPL title, and for Viper, who had fallen short so many times in the past, finally conquered. I'm Captain Flowers, and that's it for this week's episode of the Out Play by Play. Let me know what you think. Is Viper the best AD carry heading into Worlds? Be sure to follow at LOL Esports on Twitter to stay up to date with everything League of Legends Esports, and we'll catch you back here next time.